how do we balance the need for explainability in AI decision making with the complexity of modern data sets? Um, yeah, I mean, there's the two com things, complexity of the modern data set and the complexity of the models. There's this trade-off, you know, do you want more complex models or do you have more interpretive models? Right. If you're using linear regression and decision trees, you can figure out what's going on pretty easily. But when we start using neural networks, it becomes much, much harder. Right. Um, and, you know, that depends on the use case. If you're, if you're doing like ad targeting, maybe you don't care that uh, you know like uh, show me cat videos you know no maybe maybe you don't care that it that you are explained exactly why that decision was arrived at but on the other hand if it's a medical diagnosis of hey we think you have cancer you really want to know why it thinks you have cancer right that becomes extremely important very fast so we've seen some of the labs uh, release this idea of feature control where you can start to understand which features are being activated in the, the deep learning neural network. Um, do you think that's leading us somewhere helpful uh, or uh, how do you see us actually uh, implementing explainability uh, in neural networks in the future? Um, well, so uh, a, sh a shout out to uh, where we're here local to the Raleigh area. And we have a, a professor here, uh, um, uh, Cynthia Rudin, that, uh, that has produced some interesting work in this area. Hmm. And her, one of her papers, this looks like that, takes um takes ai models and like you get a picture of a bird it says well this wing looks like this bird so we think that this is is, is this bird because this wing and this oh, beak look this way right so it's a very detailed explainability paradigm and i think we're going to see more and more of those develop got it um it just takes a little bit of time to get for the for the catch up because right now we're just making bigger and bigger models it's going to be more and more important for us to make explainable models right too. Like you said, if you go to the doctor and you get MRI and it, it gives you a scary result, you want to understand, okay, well, tell me a little bit more about that. It, especially, I assume we all know now that a lot of uh, the scanning, uh, explaining, diagnosing is going to be happening, you know, through models in the future. Um, and they will be more accurate, um, but we also understand why, because there's not a human talking to us on the other end. So. Um, Let's keep moving on to uh, talking about diversity and inclusion. So what are some of the strategies for promoting diversity and inclusion in AI development to ensure that these systems better reflect the needs of a massively diverse user group? Sure. Um, first is assessing the, the current state of your team. I mean, uh, having a diverse team helps you build diverse products. Um, so, you know, making sure you have, you analyze your team's demographics, background, and skill sets, see where you understand. And if you do have deficiencies in that area, recruitment and onboarding and development uh, can play a whole, a whole role. Um, and then when you do have a system that is working, doing uh, involved in diverse perspectives and user experience testing. I mean, you have people with all different technology backgrounds and different backgrounds that have to use the technology. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's frankly unfair to have it just af after one demographic and, it, you know, it works for just a small percentage of the people out there. You need to work for everybody.